Before I begin, let me start by saying I'm explaining this movie for the last generation because I'm looking around at some of y'all's Tide Pod eating and condoms noting videos and I'm thinking, the end is nigh. The stars of our movie today are all the same fucking people who were in the last fucking movie. Except this guy right here that Jeb met at the New Orleans Comic Con. He was smooth as fuck and smelled like Coke 45. And yes, my mama was there and she did almost give herself an asthma attack yelling, Oh my god, it's Billy D! It's Billy D! I imagine in his noggin he was thinking, I'm 70 years old and I still got it. Childish Gambino, you could never. Your video was cool and all that, but when it comes to Lando, just leave it to the real Mac Daddy. And how the hell can we sell more Star Wars dolls? Oh, excuse me, action figures. That's just a made up word so them boys that begged them mamas for $2.99 to buy one wouldn't feel weird checking out their little mounds of plastic where everything ought to be. Look, there's even new ones. Check out this sh**. Don't you just love that one eyebrow? I better not buy one and accidentally leave it in the bathroom. My mama might confuse it with a douchebag. But look at this old one. Smooth as fuck. All right, I'm done being insulting, now I'm not play. Our story begins with more scrolling backstory text to let us know what the f we're looking at again. And if you think these opening sequences are cool, it's not. You're experiencing a hallucination induced by the music of John Williams. He is the master of making dumb concepts seem cool. Okay, so let's summarize. The Rebel Alliance has repeatedly been dealt out weapons by the Empire, and now they are hiding out on a planet that is colder than a witch's tit. And Big Daddy Doth wanna go spank that little Skywalker hiney. Pardon me, I was under the impression that once you started a movie, the movie was supposed to start. Try this again, play! Our story really begins with an Empire ship sending out some probe droids to the big round snowball. I don't know exactly what they probe, but guard your orifices. So Luke gets attacked by a Bumble who is just ornery because he done seen Harry and the Hendersons and don't understand why he was passed up for that role. And that's about it. Dear Lord, I can see y'all's comments now. Explain Harry and the Hendersons. So here comes Han who was on patrol and left like a minute too soon. Just long enough for Luke to get whacked. And just to cause a recurring problem for the story, the Millennium Falcon is undergoing routine maintenance. And the only major part that's broken is the part that helps them get out of tight spots. Convenient. But this put Han and his pet in another kind of tight spot because he needed to take them earnings he's obtained from the Rebels to pay off Jabba the Hutt. Because they drug this damn plot device out way too fucking long. So of course it created a sad romantic rift between Han and the Royal One. And did anybody really think he was gonna leave? I can just imagine little eight year olds in the 70s with their bowl haircuts and polyester bell bottoms crying into their popcorn. Gives me a little warm fuzzy feeling. And Han and Leia look at each other and have a conversation where Leia says, don't leave, baby. Don't you know we need to make it so we can have that bitchy, fugly emo child so he can stab you right through the fucking tit and you can die just like you always wanted while Chewie watches? And I can act remorseful but not very well because the Botox made my face too tight to show emotion? And then I can tragically die a day before my mama and Disney can disrespectfully turn my ass into a space-defying cosmic void flying Mary Poppins? And Han goes, I love it when you talk dirty. Oh, f Bert and Ernie over here still at it. So they go to tell Han that Luke still ain't back yet, and if he don't get his back in this place soon, at best he might forget which Disney movie he's in and start singing Let It Go, and at worst, he's gonna think he's in a Mel Brooks movie and freeze the space balls off. Lord Jesus, I can see y'all's comments now. Explain space balls for people who hate Rick Moranis. Well, I can't fit that sh on a damn thumbnail. Back at the Bumble's pad, Luke wakes up inverted, uses the false to do some Stephen King's carry telekinesis sh and he bumbles out into the snow, collapses, and hallucinates. Ben, what am I supposed to do? Go see Master Yoda, dumb bit. Ben, why are you back from the dead? Because I'm a better actor than you, dumb bit. Two minutes of me is worth more than two hours of you. They even paid me more, probably. Ben, why do they pay you more than me? Because I was in Lawrence of Arabia since so before your dumb bit self was born, dumb bit. Ben, why the f*** are you talking like that? For dramatic effect, dumb bit. I do it right and you don't. That's why they pay me the big bucks, probably. Ben, what's Jesus like? Wrong religion, dumb bit. See you later, Ben. Love you, muffin. Dumb bit. Here come Hero Han. Good timing, asshole. And then he saves Luke by... That's nasty. Then, 
Spoiler alert! They don't die. I don't mean to sound disappointed, but I am. Echo Base, this is Rogue 2. I just got four seconds of screen time because I saved the heroes of the story. Dummy, you ain't do shit. And this is where George Lucas begins utilizing deep symbolism to show that the old Luke died out in the tundra and is gonna be reborn as a big Jedi man fetus. And I am so full of shit right now. Just like that daddy Luke's wearing. And you know how you always got that one overbearing dick at the workplace to make everybody nervous? That's Darth Vader. And this bitch go around choking bitches left and right. You such a false master, use it to find your goddamn son yourself. Then some big metal dogs go to fetch the rebels and the base is stomped. Pun intended, while the rest of the rebels flee. Flee! <laughs> and let me just say that this level on a Nintendo 64 was a bitch and a half. First you had to line the motherfuckers ass up with your ass. Then you gotta shoot them in the ass with the cable. Then you gotta wrap around the legs. It, it was just a pain in the dick. Then Han, Leia, Chewie, and C-3PO take off for the rendezvous point, but of course they won't make it because too much would go right. And Luke tells R2, Oh, I'm just abandoning our friends so I can go learn some voodoo shit in the bayou. Maybe they'll be having a comic con and I can meet Billy D. Billy D, Billy D, Billy D. Luke crash lands in a swamp. Well, duty. R2 swallows some swamp junk and bluffs. Back on the Empire ship, we get a glimpse of Vader's crusty old pale raisin looking head. And Han and friends land on their ass droids. Then more sexual tension and Han's like, Is that weird that that gave me a stiffy? Too bad we ain't got time to bone. And Leia just sit there like, Yeah, well, he's just lucky that the only other pair of balls on this ship are Chewbacca's and I don't do furries. Back in the bayou, Luke eats some granola, he almost shoots a wrinkly-headed pony-eared toad, and then the green thing tries to munch his damn fiber ball because he's tired of eating okra. That shit right there look like it will tear your colon up. And Luke's like, help me find a great Jedi master and get your tiny little green bony ass out of my shit. Back on an Imperial ship, Darth Hideous tells Darth Vader, that guy that destroyed our most powerful weapon in the first movie might be a problem later. And he might be your son, but I'm not sure because George ain't thought of that yet. Then we go back to Luke, who finds out the old toad with old man ear hair is really Yoda. Then we go back to Han and Leia, who are having problems with some kind of freaky space pterodactyls, and find out they've been in the gut of a big giant space tapeworm in an asteroid. And then we go back to Luke, who's being trained by Yoda to become a Jedi Master in a setting that looks perfect for a great music video with a song that goes... <laughs> Somebody should do that. I think it'd be a hit. And all this shit's starting to make me dizzy, so I'm glad they gonna park it here for just a damn minute. And now we gotta deal with some deep shit again, where Luke ventures into a cave and fantasizes about beheading Darth Vader, and then the mask busts open and he sees himself, which means he could turn Darth in a big damn hurry. And Yoda just sit there shaking his head like, whew, white folk. Get it? Cause he green? I guess it ain't easy. Oh, Hades, I can see y'all's comments now. Do the Muppets explain for a Muppet of a man? Then we go back to Han and Leia, and they go buzzing the tower, and the guy inside is like, Damn, son of a bitch. I don't know how they got by, but dummy, you can't hit shit. Oh, fuck, I can see y'all's comments now. Do Top Gun, I already did. The other day, I swear to God, I got a comment. Do the Godfather. Bit. So back at the swamp, Yoda tells Luke that size doesn't matter, which is just something you say to people with small appendages. And he lifts Luke's X-Wing out of the water a little too slow for my taste. I mean, I get that he's 900 years old, but when he was 880, he was flinging shit around like nobody's business. Well, I guess that's what retirement will do for you. Turn your brain to mush. Oh, well, they do say that the last 20 years are the shittiest anyway. What the f***, Yoda? What is this happy horse and Yoda just says, mm, That's why they pay me the big bucks, probably. Hold on, let me see how far we are through this sh Oh my god, holy son of a Jezebel, Jim. Jim gonna have to take a potty break. I ain't even get to see Billy D yet. Okay, I'll be back in a little while. Like, right now. Be sure to click episode 5, part 2 of 2. For movies explained for, I'm Jeb, a dying of boredom. And since I didn't save this whole damn video, I'm just gonna get it out now. Titties.